Today's the day. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's not really the sort of weather for it. Yo, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name's JD and I'm an artist from Bristol in the UK. But if you're a returning person, you may remember recently I done three indoor murals at Brunel Care Home. Now off the back of that job, someone who went in, saw the murals, was like, wow, I love these murals. They got in touch with me and they were like, hey, JD, would you be able to do a mural out in my back garden on my brick wall? No, they weren't anything like that. I don't know why I'm doing that. I got hit up, not literally. They hit me up and they were like, Jay, would you be able to do a nice big landscape painting on our back garden wall? It looks out from our conservatory, so it's just something nice to look at. And I was like, yeah, definitely, I'm up for this. So I saw this as an opportunity to take you guys along for my first ever outdoor spray painting mural. Now I'm gonna do what I always do, bring you along from start all the way through to finish, so you're going to see all the design work all the way through to the finished piece. So that's pretty much it. Not much else to say. Let's crack on. I start off by using a piece of chalk just to map everything out onto the wall where it goes. I don't use a doodle grid or anything like that, I just do it freehand, sort of stand back, see where everything is, if it looks right, good to go. So I'm just mapping that out and the first thing I start off with is the sky. Now I was going to do some bricks, sort of making it look like the bricks were broken apart and this was inside, but I decided to just go for the easy route and just do a nice clean edge using a piece of cardboard. And as you can see I've done sort of a sunset with the yellow fading up to the blue and this goes behind the mountains. And now I'm just adding some highlight to the mountains, map them out in grey first. And using a piece of cardboard I just rip the edge so I've got a slight texture and I use this combined with spraying towards the edge at a certain angle. And this gives me the textures of the mountain and I'm using different shades of grey to achieve this. I just start adding a little bit more yellow into the cracks of the mountains just to try and give a bit more of an illusion of sunlight bursting through behind the mountains. Now this could be a sunset or a sunrise. It's literally just up to the viewer's discretion. Just use your imagination. And right now I'm just starting with the background sort of forests and just laying down the base green. And the foreground is a slightly different green to give the illusion of a bit more depth because if I kept everything the same colour it would look a bit more flat. And later on I will go in, after I filled in these areas, I will go in and do a bit more detail. But for now you're just blocking out all the areas with the generic colour that they are before adding all the bits and bobs that make it fancy. I always try to work my pieces, especially landscapes, do the background first and then work my way forward to the things in the foreground. Now you do this because if you paint something in the foreground, it becomes extremely difficult to then try and do something behind it without going over it. 
check the mic and make sure it sound right boy on this section here as you can see i've started adding some of the shadows to the water and the trees and i'm adding the depth and the illusion of the water and trees by adding different shades of those colors now it might take some trial and error but I keep going until I find something I'm happy with. I use the tiny pink stencil cap to add some details. I'll put a link to this product in the description, although it's extremely hard to get hold of nowadays because unfortunately they've stopped making them. But I also use a paintbrush a little bit to add some details and just using the spray paint and putting that onto the brush. Now most of the background is done time to start adding some of the things in the foreground and adding more detail to the piece. Right, As this isn't a huge wall, to help me out I made myself some stencils and this just makes my life easier to do those small sort of animals and stuff. And I have to say for a piece which isn't a huge wall and it's hard to get detail on, the tiny pink stencil cap is absolutely brilliant for adding those small details had a slight issue it was February it was cold and it was damp so I had to keep drying the wool with a towel before applying the spray paint I'm just adding a couple of birds up in the tree here I like a lot of things to see in the artwork every sort of little corner you look in there's something different to see So, unfortunately we didn't quite finish the piece, I've just got a few more finishing little touches to do, sign it, and then lacquer the whole piece, but as you may be able to tell, the weather is absolutely awful, just not being able to go back and do it, so we're just going to wait for this weather to die down, and then I'll be able to get back there and show you the final shots. Let's get indoors. Today's the day. Oh. oh. Maybe I'll give it another day or two. Yeah, it's not really the sort of weather for it. Seventy-five years later. And finally, we are back at our commission. Unfortunately, we've had some really bad weather, so I'm really glad to be able to get back and put together these final little touches to finish off the piece. So I'm adding a few birds into the sky, and I've realised this one is in the recess of the bricks. So I'm going to be moving this one. Now I'm adding a couple of layers of colour just to try and add a little bit of an effect of shadow. I did actually prefer the shape of this bird compared to the third one so I reused this one for the stencil. And then voila we have three flying birds in the sky. The last thing to do before I lacquer this piece is to add my signature. And again, to do this, I'm using a stencil. If I was to try and write my name out, it would probably end up about six foot long. And no one wants a big six foot long JD artwork signature on the wall, do they? I mean, if you do, hit me up, commission, I could do that. And finally, we're on to lacquering the piece. Now this took pretty much four cans of lacquer to do. And this little bit made me laugh, because I feel like I look like a bit of a crab. Walking along, sideways on my knees. That's quite funny on the time lapse. But anyway, that is pretty much it. Here's the final shots. We are finished.
So, that is it for today's video. I had so much fun spray painting this piece and the client absolutely loved it. I am so, so happy. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video as well. If you did, as always, sick if you smash that thumbs up button, give it a like, and it'd be wicked if you could subscribe too. And don't forget, tick that little bell notification icon. You'll know straight away when my next video drops. So anyway, until then, take it steady out there, and I'll see you in the next one.